What's up Zox fam? Now we're going to be getting into Calcet Anistar. Now sorry for the delay. I actually wanted to do a little bit of testing with her uh, before I actually made this video so that I could really have a clear understanding of how good and or bad this unit is. And let me tell you, we got a lot to get into with this unit because uh, she's actually going to be um, very, very, very interesting for uh, things like Kronos especially, right? So let's go ahead and jump into her kit and we'll just kind of talk about her build and stuff like that. Now, uh, you're going to have to excuse the relic quality. Uh, this is a much like earlier account, uh, so it's not super broken. It's not my main account where all my relics are like God tier or close to God tier, I should say. Uh, but we're going to start out with her abilities all right uh so the thing is is that what she's able to do so her code exploit um s1 um she's able to attack one enemy and she deals up to 120 percent attack 80 percent chance of inflicting miss uh miss rate up for two turns and then when out stealth uh, she launches a pursuit attack with transmit virus now uh the thing i want to clarify about that is that that requires you to have um your rezo too so that's what this skill will change into but before that you you just get the mess up rate and the damage right uh now after that you have uh on the s2 the trojan horse so attacks all enemies deals 85 percent attack the fewer the enemies the higher the damage and enemies plus one uh turn on their debuffs um and this is besides ccs and then at the start of combat gains stealth for two turns um and then the s3 which is the transmit virus so gains attack for two turns um attack up for two turns uh, attacks one enemy two times damage Damage 100% attack and flicks defense down for two turns. And then the next attack attacks all enemies. And then the damage is 50% uh, uh, attack and it inflicts attack down for two turns. So the way that that pretty much works is she single target nukes someone with the first hit. And then the last hit or the second hit will actually AOE attack break. Um, so then she gains stealth for three turns. If Anishtar has stealth, stealth is minus uh, one turn. Uh, to deal extra to da uh, true damage. Um, and then the true damage is equal to 15% of the target's max HP. Uh, damage against bosses is 3%. Uh, and then this triggers one time per turn. And then with the rezo, you get the final damage plus 10%, right? Uh, Captain lead crit rate, uh, 25%. So not really bad for that either, but probably not going to use that that often, right? Now, in terms of the overall like build I've been working with, like just kind of running her like out the box, uh, I've been running her on uh, crit damage, attack percent, and attack percent. Um, so I'm kind of working around like trying to get my subs and stuff like that like allocated properly on this account. But ideally, what you want to aim for is uh, crit damage. So like essentially, if you could be farming like the Hammer of Thor set, that's going to be really, really good on her. Obviously, you can use Fire and Cadence sets uh, for the crit rate if you don't have enough crit rate. So just kind of aiming for those kinds of stats would be really, really good for her. Um, but you definitely want her to be doing as much damage as she possibly can. And then, of course, you factor in the HP scaling DPS she has. She's going to be absolutely melting bosses, right? Uh, now, on to, well, really, Kronos. <laughs> now, looking at the Ascensions, uh, obviously, you gain attack, you gain D, uh, HP here. Uh, and then you're going to, on phase three, uh, you're going to be gaining the attack up uh, to self um, on that as well. Um, then after that, you get an additional crit rate, speed, and additional 20% more attack on phase six. So really, really good. Like I mentioned before, though, it is going to be necessary to get her to Rezo 2 if you really want to see her go like kind of crazy. Um, and this is actually going to make her even more useful in an earlier sense, if that's fair to say, because this extra um, like ability on Rezo 2, where she's able to, when out stealth, launch the pursuit attack with transmit virus, that's automatically allowing her to get pretty much a free S3, which is kind of insane. Um, and the thing is, is that like that's going to kind of offset defense breaks that you might be missing. That attack down will help you brace for damage that might be coming in. So it's really 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 freaking good right so let's go ahead and get into a run with her now i want to show the team that i'm currently using and the gear quality right because this isn't like a speed clear or anything like that uh but this is chrono 16 the team that i'm using uh ali anishtar zeus um, odette and sally um, and the thing is speed lead, right? But I want to show you my relics, right? So I'm using, um, some decent relics. Like these are not the best relics. I promise you guys like, look, two flats, crit damage and HP, 
uh, crit rate speed, two flats. Like these are these are not that great, right? Uh, five star piece. Um, my initial star, obviously, you just showed her um, her build as well. Uh, we got Zeus. Oh, Zeus, who's the only one that's like fully kitted, but even then. Um, his crit damage isn't technically that high. So it's a lot of different like missing pieces to this. And his team can uh, still clear uh, Kronos uh, 16, right? So let's go ahead and get into it. Just so you guys can get kind of the visual of how she operates. Now, the cool thing is, is that she also works wave to wave, which I think is like one of the things I actually like about her. Um, so right there, you see the single target nuke, and then she does the AOE, which can potentially give you a attack break. So now we're on to the next wave. And then that S1 having the miss up rate is kind of nice. So she gets she gets like pretty decent damage. And the thing is, is that mine is even like properly built all the way. So like once she's fully kitted and fully built, right, she's going to be doing a solid amount of DPS. All right. So we're going to get rid of that. Oh, goodbye. All right. There we go. All right. So now. Here we go. So we're going into the boss phase now. And the cool thing is, is like I said, she just does really, really freaking well. Look, defense break into an attack break, <laughs> followed up by Ali into a nuke with Zeus. And this is even like the best it could be, which is like nuts. And then, of course, because of the stealth, she's just not getting targeted. So then let's see if we can show the follow up. So keep in mind, she just used her S3 a turn ago, right? So let's see here. Kronos is doing his thing. All right. Now we should be looking. Let's see. I think it's one more turn. I think she gets her follow up. So now we get the attack up from Sally. Dang. Levo dead alone. But so far, so good, I would say, overall, considering like with a pep having all this extra crap. Here's the follow up. Right. And then so she keeps that attack break on him. So it like kind of makes it like to where Kronos has no choice but to kind of deal with like <laughs> just having a debuff on him, which is kind of insane, right? And so this pretty much takes this run from going from pretty much not really going to ever really work to being able to work. Um, and that's yes, that's her over there doing HP percent damage. And like I said, most people would think like you wouldn't be able to do this with any five star relics. There you go. Right. So <laughs> she's kind of ridiculous. Like and the thing is, is like I said, I feel like this is a good example because this is her not even fully invested, like not properly allocated, uh, not on the Hammer of Thor. This is about a two minute run. And this is just again. When you're looking at the rest of the team too, these are all Rezo Zero. Like these are R Zeros. This isn't an R6 Gaius, not a R6 Sally, not a R6 Ali, not a R6 Odette. It's only an R2 Anishtar, which is just kind of insane. So 61 turns. Um, my highest record with this team was actually 38. So I didn't have anyone else that, which is crazy. I don't even know how that happened, but yeah. So yeah, this actually is like, it kind of varies, but um, yeah, this is just ridiculous. It, it is absolutely ridiculous. I think Anishtar, to kind of answer that question, if she's a must pull, um, probably for a lot, of, a lot of accounts. I mean, that's kind of one of the things I think like, when I look at the value of Yun Chuan compared to her, I feel like Yun Chuan ended up being the option that you could utilize for Fafnir. He really is good for that. Um, his, of course, his kit opens up at R2 as well. Um, and then he just ends up being a really, really solid choice for having a PvP with his extra um, pursuits from his dog. But Anishtar is actually going to be really, really solid for a newer player, especially if you're starting out earlier. Um, that's probably going to be an amazing pickup for your for your Kronos, considering that Kronos is the most important ritual miracle to be able to farm um, and then of course for later game players just to kind of give you an offset character to kind of make things slightly easier she's gonna be really really good now how i personally feel about that i wish that there were other characters that you could slot in outside of her that would make things as easy um, especially when we're talking about hp scaling dps um that's just kind of one of the things there but uh outside of that she works for what it's worth let me know what you guys think. Uh, and yeah, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one.